Hello, this is Craig, and I thought I would teach you a little bit about how I did some IK work um, for this character model. I'm working on bludgeoning hair and clothes into working, so this is a good way to distract myself. But as you can see, this character interacts with surfaces, um, reaching out and touching them. Uh, there's also a little bit of physics involved in that she'll walk a little bit faster when her hand's on the wall, and she'll push off from the wall if she gets a little too close. Uh, now this is a little more complicated than it looks. There's two components to it. There's the IK component, and then there's the animation component. The IK component uh, has a couple of gotchas in it, and I'll show you those gotchas now. When you're doing the set IK and set rotation, uh, you have to make absolutely sure on your layers that IK pass is turned on. Other than that, you also have to use the IK uh, script. The, there is a, um, uh, that's not what I wanted to do, there it is, there is a specialized IK call, an on, on animator IK. I just then go and in immediately call uh, another script I've written on the main character controller because this has to be put on the, uh, on the avatar and uh, I don't actually do my, my calculations on the avatar, I do them on a containing box. Either way, you have to use this function and you have to have IK pass turned on on all your layers. So aside from that, there's also uh, what how I establish the IK, and that is I fire off a ray every round. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. Uh, in my swimming game, I fire off an IK ray uh, once if I don't have an IK target within range. So that means that if I was walking along this wall in the swimming game, she would be moving her hand forward and then back as she hit a specific IK target and would just keep tracking that specific IK target. In this case, she's walking along the wall and I don't want her to like hop her hand along the wall. I want her to slide it along the wall. So she checks for a new IK target every round. Um, the IK, the ray I use to establish the IK target starts from behind her and then moves diagonally forward and off to the side of the hand in question. And that way uh, you don't reach off into some kind of forward, uh, awkward forward angle all the time. But you have to be careful not to hit the character um, bounding box, the character's uh, collision box. Um, there are a couple of ways to go around that. If you have trouble with it, you can actually just go ahead and turn the box off for the part of the function that you're doing the ray tracing. The other half of this is the animation. You can see how the hand opens when it's against the wall. Um, that's using animation layers. Animation layers are broken, so let me show you how to get around the gotchas that they put in. So here's the trick. You see how this weight is set to 1? It's not. It's actually set to 0, and you can't change it. Um, it's, I, I guess it's a miss feature, but you can't set the you can't set the uh, weight here in the uh, before you press play. It's only when you've pressed play that you can set the weight. So if you wanted to have a, w a layer that was always played, for example, if you have one layer that's body animations and one layer that's hand animations like I do, you can't rely on that weight being one. Instead, when you start it up, you have to switch over to setting the layer weight. So you actually have to call this set layer weight and set the layer weight to one. Um, similarly, if you wanted to go ahead and do um, less heavy layers, you just set the layer weight to something lower than one. And those are the tricks.